I've been reading my copy of If Only magazine. I don't know if you know it. Great magazine, an insight into what's going on. I was reading about Biggleswick, which is a medium-sized town, right on the cusp between two counties. There's Bessex on one side and Good for Shear on the other side. And uh, Bessex is sort of just straddling the, the middle, near the airport there. Anyway, the point was the council seemed to have been uh, pushing out a whole load of directives that the people of Biggleswick were a bit unhappy with. They were pushing forward these Agenda 21, Agenda 2030, and in particular the 15-minute cities. And a number of people were slowly waking up to that because they'd seen these massive great big plant pots being placed right in the middle of the road, which made it very awkward for people to go through, and they didn't really want it. And then they'd heard that actually, in the future, very soon, if you did more than 100 journeys from one side of the town, to the other side of the town, you were going to be fined. And in view of that, they had all these number plate recognition cameras going up and people were going, wow, that's a bit much, isn't it? And soon they were saying, well, actually, you won't be able to have your petrol or diesel cars. You'll only be able to have electric cars. Although it seemed very peculiar because they weren't putting in many electric points anyway, and neither were they fixing the roads because the roads was full of potholes. And then on top of that, somebody else said, hang on a minute, isn't there a consultation going on at Biggleswick Park next to the campsite where on the campsite you will no longer be able to bring in camper vans or mobile homes. So you, you won't be able to travel there in any kind of vehicle and stay overnight or indeed travel around the country. And Biggleswick was going to be one of those towns that was going to be a, a test case for this. And the people thought, I'm not sure we like this. This is a bit much. So many of the people started to get together and they went to the council and they said to the council officers, they said, excuse me, um, we're not very happy about having all these cameras monitoring us and these great big plant pots in the way. And, you know, we're paying our council tax, but we're not really paying to build the prison. We don't want to live like this. This is not what we want. And the councils were going, oh, yes, no, don't worry about it. It's all there for your safety. It's all safe and effective. Nothing to worry. And uh, they basically were just ignoring the people. So the people got a little bit upset by this. They said, every time we make any kind of um, uh, confrontation with the council, they just nod and smile, but nothing gets done. And we keep paying our council tax and still they're putting up more cameras and they seem to be having biometrics in all the shops. And also they're allowing great big corporations to have uh, their shops and all the independent shops seem to be railroaded. And also the prices of everything are going up with some sort of fuel crisis, the cost of living. And not only that, our taxes are continually increasing all the time. So the people of Biggleswick decided, you know what, this isn't good enough. This, we're not having this. They decided that grassroots Roots was the key to sorting out the problem. So what they did is they decided, somebody and a number of people formed a little committee and they said, we need to get the people together and have a meeting. And so very soon, all round Biggleswick were these posters advertising a meeting on a certain date. And on this date, it was saying, we're going to have a meeting in Biggleswick Park. And they were going to let everybody come in and have a, have a group discussion about what they think about it for their town. Well, of course, the councillors, they saw this and they thought, hang on a minute, what's going on? We can't have them making decisions on our behalf. We're the council. So they decided that when the date came, after all these posters had been shoved up and people were going, oh, yeah, that sounds interesting. They decided to close the park because there was maintenance. Oh, sorry, we can't have you in that day. Maintenance, we've got to uh, dig a new swimming pool or, or we've got to sort of weed the pansies. Uh, we're closing all the entrances. You won't be able to come into Biggleswick Park. Sorry about it. But the little committee that had started this whole meeting in the park thing decided that's OK because we know a local farmer. And the local farmer had already had a directive from the government and endorsed by the Biggleswick Council that he was having to have to do this new precision breeding. And he wasn't very happy with that because he didn't want any GM crops. He wanted to do organically and he wanted to supply the locality. He'd been fed up with having to do monoculture and actually being almost squeezed off the land and pressured by new developers who wanted to put these cookie cutter type houses all over the land and the people were going oh I don't know whether we want that because we haven't got the infrastructure there's no roads are you going to build any schools no are you going to have any more small independent shops no so the farmer was already incensed and didn't know what to do so the farmer said look you're going to have this meeting on this particular date why don't you come onto my land 
So uh, the committee said, that's brilliant. So they then started to put up a whole new poster saying, this is where it's going to take place. And on the day, on the day, because nothing the council could do to stop them, on the day, the people of Biggleswick all turned up in their masses. And it was nice. It was like a, it was like a festival, like a, a fun day. There were all sorts of stalls, people selling books and bric-a-brac and all of this. There were nice cakes and scones and things like that. There was even a beer tent that would be open after the main meeting. And there was a large arena and everybody could gather around. People had brought their picnics. They had their gingham little, um, what you call it, that they could sit on and they had their sandwiches and flasks and somebody had provided a, a, a tannoy system and then the little committee sat on a table uh, in front of it and they said hello hello can you hear us can you hear us and everyone said yes yes and and everybody gathered round. all the people of Biggleswick were encouraged to come along and it was free and they were having a jolly old time so the chairman got up and he says right okay ladies and gentlemen have a listen to this and he got some notes and he was talking about the agenda 21 and the agenda 2030 and he was talking about the 15 minute cities and said have you seen the cameras and the big plant pots and do you know why they're here have you thought about it are you concerned and a lot of people did know about it but there were a lot of people who actually had no idea they had such busy lives they had no concept of what was coming down the line and they were horrified and this was sort of all verified by people around saying oh yeah yeah have you not seen the website and they were showing them on the mobile phone and there was footage of all these people and the WEF and all of that saying what was coming and how they were going to be eating bugs and they'd manipulating everything and, and, and all of this and we were going to watch you and you were all going to be in enclosed in these areas and, and the people started to sort of bristle and they said, I'm not quite sure. Well, there were, of course, the members of the council were present at the meeting of being very worried and sort of watching from afar, thinking, hang on, this is this is looking a bit much. So then the, the chairman said, Does it, now, now have I explained what is coming down to you? And this is what the council seemed to be hell bent. We've been to the council. We've asked them not to do it. They don't seem to want to do it. We're paying our poll tax or our council tax and they just still are ignoring us do you want ladies and gentlemen of all of you do you want this to happen do you want the cameras the big plant pots the biometrics the digital ids do you want that all to happen in our little town do you want the campsites to be shut so people can't go in the mobile phones do you not want to be able to have your car so you can travel around and do things and have a nice environment uh, and, and all of those things and the people started to go, no, I don't know, we, we don't really want this. So, so all those in favour of not having all of this agenda, 21, 2030, and all these 15 minute cities, put your hand up and everyone, everyone put their hand up without exception. There might have been a couple of people who didn't fully understand it or who are too busy tucking into a mince pie or whatever. But and most people put their hands up and they're saying, great, OK. So we'll carry that unanimous that we, the people of Biggleswick, we don't want that. And everyone was going, absolutely, we don't want any of that sort of thing at all. So this was all Karen. He said, now, the thing is, you see, we can go back to the council and say all the people of Biggleswick don't want that. But you know what the council's going to do? They're just going to nod and smile and say, oh, yes, that was nice meeting you had. But unfortunately, the powers that are above have dictated this to us. There's nothing you can do. And the chairman said, but the thing is, there is something that we can do. After all, we're paying our taxes. It's our money that's funding all this. Actually, let's not pay our taxes to the council who are saying there's nothing they can do and they're going to implement it anyway. Why don't we instead pay our taxes into a fund that we, a new council, would take over and we will make sure that we look after what the things are that we want in this town rather than what the council want in this town. And everybody thought that was a brilliant idea. They were all saying, yes, absolutely. And not only that, he said, isn't it funny how the council tax is all negotiated behind the scenes and you don't know what you're paying for. And if you don't pay it, they're coming down on you like a ton of bricks. Let's get rid of that whole thing. Let's negotiate with each and every individual household the services that you want. How about that? So you may only want the bins and the lights. You may not want to pay for certain other things. And we could negotiate with that and people were going blimey yeah that sounds good because if I haven't got a lot of money I could probably take the rubbish down to the tip myself or I don't need certain services or this that and the other we want to pay a bit more for the for the roads and make sure the roads are actually working we want to pay to get rid of those awful plant pots and we want to pay to have those cameras m removed and so most people were sort of in agreement that actually in and amongst themselves those people through a new committee could actually run the town so much better than the councillors 
So then the chairman said, fine, that's absolutely fantastic. He said, what I would like to do then is to get everybody to sign on a big, and he had a great big roll of wallpaper, that, that they're going to sign in a, a new committee which would be voted on. So this committee is going to be dissolved. A new committee would be set up. You could all vote for who you want to be on that committee with the ethos that we've all decided here in this park that we don't want the 15-minute cities. We don't want the low-traffic neighbourhood rubbish. We want to have that freedom to be able to walk about and not have cameras film us every minute, not have the digital IDs, not have to have biometrics and the whole caboose and that the councils who seem impotent and unable to do anything we're just going to say you're irrelevant you're no longer required and we're not paying your wages it was a fantastic article and that seems to be what the big people of Biggleswick have actually now started to implement and I thought isn't that strange if only other towns could get the, everybody together people in the town could get together and make a decision for them for their own people rather than having this top down sort of thing that the government tell the councils the councils tell the people and the people have to put up with it and I thought well actually of course the people have the power because they don't have to pay the councillors if they don't want everything Thing. They have to just remember there's more of them than there are of the councillors and the government. And if people really want to rise up and do their own thing and have common sense and use common law or natural law to govern their land, then the power is really with them after all, isn't it? It's got nothing to do with the councillors and the small members of parliament who don't seem to be able to do their job. And so I thought that's an interesting article. So if you get a copy of the, oh, if, the, the if Only magazine, it's worth reading about Biggleswick because it could be, just could be, an example of how we, the people, can take back control.